Hello, and welcome back to Diecast Graveyard. My name is Paul. Today we're going to restore a Hot Wheels Roger Dodger. Now this car was sent to me by one of my subscribers, and he asked me to, if, you know, can you please do something with this car? I really love it, and I want it repaired. So I says, you know, why not? I'll, I'll accept the challenge for sure. So I went ahead and got it. Once I got it and took it apart, I went, what in the hell did I get myself into? Well, we're going to have some fun because this was definitely a challenge, but it was well worth it. Let's go ahead and move on and take this, get this car apart and see what we're dealing with here. I've already drilled out the post and we had to also drill out the engine. The uh, car was definitely really rough. I mean, look how dirty it is on the inside. And uh, it's worn out. It's definitely worn out. Everything needs to be done to this car. We need to strip it down. We need to get some new decals for it. At least the body's straight and there's no broken pillars or anything like that. So that's a good thing going for us. The engine is tarnished. We're going to have to polish that up. The base, as rusty as you can see, will definitely have to replace those wheels with some uh, red line tires from another car, a donor. We'll have to polish that up and make that look good. Interior looks like hell. The uh, windshield, we got to clean that up and polish that up as best we can. Definitely dirty there. We got our work cut out for us for sure. Here we're going to put the body in the citrus strip. Make sure we're going to coat the inside and the outside. Now, I'm not going to be able to get the enamel color here. We're going to redo this car in Spectre Flame. So, we're going to redo it in Spectre Flame Purple. That should definitely make this car look a little bit different. But it's going to make it look good. That'll be excellent. All right, let's let that set for a while and make sure that it takes everything off really good. Let's go ahead and move on. Here we're going to put the base in some lime away and water, a 50-50 mixture. We're going to let it set for approximately anywhere from three to four minutes. We're going to do the engine also because it definitely could use it. Let's let that set for a bit and we'll get right back to it. We've let it set for a bit. Look how much oxidation came off the base of this car. So we're going to scrub it down with a brass brush now and get as much off of it as we possibly can. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click on that little bell to be alerted to any future videos that come out. Someone asked me, well, how do you know it's a brass brush? Well, the answer I got was, okay, well, I knew this anyways is go ahead and hold a magnet to it. If the magnet doesn't stick, it's brass. If the magnet does stick, it's a brass coated steel brush and you definitely don't want to use one of those because it will scratch your base really, really bad. So please be careful with that. Especially if you're getting your brass brush at places like Harbor Freight or some places like that, you definitely want to make sure that you're not getting cheated on what you're purchasing. Let's go ahead here and move on. Meanwhile, back in the graveyard. Now that we got the base all cleaned up, we're going to go ahead and do a wheel swap. Here are the wheels that we had on there. Well, I happened to find some uh, wheels that were the cap style wheels. So I went ahead and ground out the, the area that holds on the wheels. And we're going to put on these new cap style wheels. This should make this car look really fresh. snap them on those are looking really good there we go they look good I'm really pleased with that that turned out excellent let's move on here we got the windshield I'm taking some ultra fine sandpaper here and we're gonna try and get out as many or as much of the scratches on there that we possibly can just make sure that you use real smooth sandpaper because if you use the real grainy stuff, it's going to put a lot more scratches in there. And it's going to take you a lot more sanding to get that stuff out. 
Now this windshield is slightly cracked, so we're just gonna do the best we can. Once we clean this up and polish it up, we're gonna dip it in the gauzy and make it look really good. Let's get to the plastic polish. Okay, I got the plastic polish here. I got this Meguiar's Plastic X from AutoZone. Just a little bit on a soft cloth. Smear it on there and just start rubbing it with your fingers. And just keep on rubbing it down. And if you need to do it some more, do it some more. But uh, for the most part, it tends to work out pretty good. Now that looks a hell of a lot better than it did when I first started. Now you know that it's getting really, really clean when you're starting to hear squeaky marks or squeaky sounds from there anyways when you're uh, rubbing it with the, uh, the cloth. You'll start hearing it make all kinds of chattering noises. Now that looks a lot better than it did. You can only do so much with a windshield that's all scratched up really bad. So just uh, take your time. Now if you, if you want to sand it down some more, go ahead. Just you got to be careful with it. Let's go ahead and move on. Now that we got the scratches out as best as we can, here we're going to dip it in the gauzy. Now this is definitely made for coating plastic windshields and like that to make them look really shiny. Mix it really slow like you see me doing here. Just don't mix it too fast because you'll get all kinds of bubbles in there. Kind of like that. I guess I was still mixing it a little too fast. Anyways. Get your windshield with a pair of tweezers, dip it in the gauzy, let as much of the excess run off as you possibly can, and then you want to wick away the excess as much as you can with a paper towel. Well, I guess I missed a spot, I had to dip it again. There you go. It's being stubborn. Look at this. There's those bubbles I was telling you about. That's why you don't want to get all kinds of bubbles in there. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and place it on a sheet of uh, paper towel. Go ahead and touch the corners to the paper towel to get rid of as much of the gauzy as you possibly can. Set it on that paper towel and then cover it up with a plastic top so you can keep the dust bunnies off there and wait for it to dry. Usually takes just a few hours. Here we've got the body, and the body's looking pretty rough. It could probably use a zinc plating, but we're going to try and get as much of the toning off as we possibly can. Here I've got some sandpaper, some 220 grit, and we're just going to take off as much of the pits and the toning and the scratches as we possibly can. Try and cover as much of the body as you can with the sandpaper, and it will take away a lot of the, the damage to the car. There we go. Now you got to be careful around areas of the car that may have some fine lines on there like door lines and door handles and stuff like that because if you sand too much a lot of that stuff will be sanded away and you're taking away the details from your car so you definitely want to be careful with that. Here I'm using some steel wool. I just recently ordered some bronze wool or some brass wool which is a lot more forgiving than the steel wool. Yeah we got a ways to go on this one. Maybe next time I'll zinc plate it. But that's looking okay. We got as much of the toning off there as we possibly can. Now we're going to use this Blue Magic Metal Polish Cream. And we're going to buff up the engine. And we're also going to buff up the body of the car. Put a little dab of that cream on there. Get your polishing tool, your Dremel, or whatever rotary tool you're using and get in there and start buffing the car. You're gonna see almost an immediate difference. Now, here's your tip today from your Uncle Polly. Make sure that you put the lid back on the cream. You'll inevitably bump into it and spill it, or the, the uh, wheel that you're using will start throwing fuzz all over the place and it'll go all inside your jar. Again, that voice of experience here. There's your tip today from your Uncle Polly. immediately you can start to see the finish come through on this car. Look at that. 
it's starting to shine up already. If you take your time, you can definitely get a good finish. Sand it down, polish it, and it'll be, look at that. Look how nice that looks already. Okay, just take your time with it and you'll get a great job. Let's move on to the engine. There, after all that work and all that time, it turned out pretty darn good for what we had to work with. That looks really nice. I'm actually very pleased with the way that turned out. We got a lot of decals to cover some of that stuff, so it'll be all right. You know what? All this polishing and sanding and everything, it's definitely, I, I could use a cold adult beverage right now. It's, it's time, time for a nice, nice cold beer. beer. Okay, here we got the base. Look at that. That looks good with that wheel swap there. There's the engine. We got that all polished up. Not too bad. It could be better, but man, I'll tell you what, it's a hell of a lot better than we had. And the body, yeah, it's got some scratches in there again, and we could polish it down even more. But we got a lot of decals that are going to cover a lot of this stuff, so I'm not worried about it too much. Let's get to painting. Okay, we're going to put down some light tack coats of the Spectra Flame Purple. Purple, you've, you've got to be careful with purple. You don't want to put it down too fast because if you put it down in too many layers too quick, it won't dry to a nice shine. And it can do that if you, if you uh, put down too much paint. So take your time, put down light coats, let it dry in between. Or let, not dry completely, but at least tack up. And that color is going to look nice on this. It's not going to be that creamy magenta that was on there before. But this purple is going to look absolutely sweet. Look how that turned out. Man, that is nice. Now don't forget, we're going to put the decals on this. And then we're also going to clear coat that too. Well, here's your decals. Here we're going to do the one on the hood first. But you got a big area that you got to cut out by hand, so be careful with that. Dip it in the water for about uh, 10 to 15 seconds, and make sure you use the Microsol on your car. Do the best you can to position your decal, and once you get it in place, start rubbing out or rolling out that excess moisture underneath there with a Q-tip or a cotton swab and then coat it down again with some of the microsol that'll help it conform to these complex curves and the pieces of the car that kind of stick out it'll help your decal settle down that much better that's looking good we got the decal on the roof that has to be put on and we've also got the decal that has to go on the trunk lid so we'll go in and put those on there also. I've been saying Microsol, I mean Microset. I apologize for that. So let's go ahead and move on. Okay, now we've had that thoroughly dry, we're going to come in and we're going to coat the entire car with some clear. This will help protect your decals. It will also help them from uh, not peeling up on you. Just put on a really nice coat. Take your time, again, put down some tack coats, cover everything you got, and then come back in and put down heavier and heavier coats as you go. Just be careful that you don't put, put down too much so it'll develop runs on you. I, I coat all my decals. This car is looking really sweet. Looking good. Okay, here we have our parts. We got the body that looks excellent. That turned out really good. We got the base with the brand new wheels and the base is all polished up. We also did some detail on the back. That looks really good. The engine's all polished up. That looks good. Happy with that. 
The windshield's all been coated with gauzy, and that's turning, that turned out really good, except for that little tiny crack, but it's the best we could do. Now, I don't have the interior in this picture, but I forgot to put it in, honestly. And here's what we started with. We got this Roger Dodger. Mr. Andrew, I hope you're happy with this car, because, man, it turned out fantastic. It uh, definitely needed a restoration. We took the car apart. We stripped it down, we cleaned it, we buffed it, we painted it, we changed out the wheels, we polished the windshield, we polished the engine, and we put it all back together. And this is what we got to. A beautifully restored Roger Dodger. Now it doesn't have the enamel paint on there, but it does have the Spectre Flame paint. Beautiful purple on this car with the recreation, the original decals of this car. The engine's been polished up, the wheels are all brand new, and we detailed it out. Man, what a beautiful, beautiful restoration of this Roger Dodger. Man, like I said, it was a challenge, but challenge accepted. Now, if you folks have cars you'd like me to restore for you, we can definitely work out something. If you've got a bunch of cars, we can work out exchanging cars for money and stuff like that. Just uh, contact me. We can barter and we can deal. I love to get cars also. But uh, what, a, what a beautiful restoration. Fantastic job here. I'm very happy with it. And I hope you like this video. Fantastic job. Thank you. I've got a Patreon page. And these team members here help me with uh, a donation so I can get the supplies that I use in order to do these restorations and pump out and knock out these YouTube videos. I sure could use your help. Please check out the comments block here in the beginning of the video and it will show you or tell you how to become a member of the Diecast Graveyard team. For a small donation, you'll get a chance to see videos before the public anywhere from one day to a week or two in advance. You'll get a chance to win some uh, giveaways that I put out there every month. You'll also get a chance to have a one-on-one -on -one conference to help with your restorations and your customs. All you got to do is contact me and we'll help you out. And I also send out pictures of work in progress. So please check out how to become a Diecast Graveyard team member with Patreon. Thank you for joining me here today on Diecast Graveyard. Uh, I've had a great time with you in this video. There's going to be a lot more videos coming out and I'm going to keep on knocking them out as long as we're home, stuck home with this COVID virus. So again, please check out the Patreon link. I sure would appreciate it. Hope you're staying healthy. Have a great day.